-hmm. did you have, um, did somebody teach you before about finding shelter? Did your dad or Tori? We, we go on camping a lot each summer. And I knew how to start a fire because I watch a lot of Tropical Paradise movies. Wow, that's good. And what did you do? How did you start a fire then? Did you start? Well, first we learned to find a little round stick that we rubbed against a plank of wood. And we had to make sure it was dry. And we wanted to get a pile of sticks to keep the fire lasting. It, but we couldn't find any rocks or the dry plank of wood. So, and my sister was holding on to that. And I said, and I turned around looking at the view. And, my, and I turned around and seen where my sister put the fire. And I said, Caroline, where's the fire? And she said, we put it down. We don't need it anymore because it was sunny. Uh -huh. So we left it behind. Uh -huh. And her dad found it. And that's how he knew he was there. He was there. And that was uh, before we got in a circle. And then after that, what did you do when it started to get dark? Well, we found shelter, a, a tree branch close to the ground, and we had my sister's rain jacket to keep us warm. So you guys shared the rain jacket together? We turned it sideways, so each of us had an armhole that we stuck our arms into, so oh. we wanted to get separated. And did that help your bodies stay warm together? Yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. But our heads were starting to get wet because there was this big gap that I didn't know, since it was starting to get dark. So we pulled it over our heads. And how did you feel, Caroline? Um, a little scared, but we found the scare spot the day after that. was nearby. That. Yeah, and it, there was only a little, there's a big giant gap, but it rain fell on my head. And the, yeah, so I used my hood to cover my face. Because I had a jack with the hood. And then, did you spend the whole night, or did you, did you cry? Well, my sister cried the whole night, and oh. so I told her to think happy thoughts of our family, and I kept watch for most of the night. What kind of happy thoughts did you do, Leah? I'm sorry, Caroline. Then Leah. Um, I thought of going to the park with mommy and daddy. I, I thought of going to the ocean. I thought everything that I remembered, but it didn't work. You didn't stay happy? When I got to sleep, I thought happy thoughts of our going on vacation in Monterey. Oh, wow. All together. Oh. And, and so then when it started to get sunny again? Well, we when woke it up. The when we woke up, we stayed in the same place so Dad could find us. And there was a creek nearby, and we sang nursery rhymes at the top of our lungs on the second morning. And then the two firemen found us. So there were two nights. Do you remember both nights? What happened? How did you get to? You were under the log the first night, and, or the, the tree branch. And then what? Did, what happened during the next day? Well, there was a huckleberry cave, a huckleberry bush cave nearby. And I knew that branch wasn't enough shelter. And I checked a look at the top, and I noticed there's no gaps, but there are windows at the bottom. So we kind of kept to watch as we stayed dry. But then when we got inside, I noticed this gap, but I thought it was OK. What kind of gap did you see? You know, was it like a coyote or a deer? Did you see any? Well, we didn't see any wild animals okay. on both the nights. And when you guys were sleeping, did you did you sleep at all that second night? Well, yeah, a little. But I kept watch most of the night. Again. And Caroline, how about you? Uh, the next day, um, Lay didn't keep watch at all, but I did a little. You did yeah. A when my sister got to sleep, finally, I kept to watch for half of the night. And then it got light again the next morning. Had you heard anybody calling? Yes. You heard people calling? Yes. Did you, what, what did you do when you heard people call? Well, we sung on the top of our lungs. Hopefully someone will hear us. And we, we heard helicopters, and we yelled at them. But 
they couldn't hear us because of their loud motors. That's true. And there wasn't enough space for them to land. There was a bunch of trees nearby. And we couldn't remember the way down. So when you realized that you couldn't find the way back down, did you decide, how did you decide to be where you were? Well, we also watch a lot of Lost movies, and then I remembered one, and, and then Ted told us whenever we get lost, we should stay in the same spot. If we move around and people find us, it'll be a lot more trickier for them, them to find us if we don't stay in the same spot. So then I think, Delta, what, what happened that morning? How did you start? Decided to go uh, that morning, I um, I had a local lady call me and say that they found footprints on a road um, that's just north of the or just north of Bigfoot, and so we mobilized. We walked a little ways and went back and got quads. We found footprints, but those footprints were they were inconclusive. They were somebody who had opened the gates but that road led us I guess up the side of the mountain that they were on the other side of and so once we made it to the end of the road we just started hiking up and trying to work our way towards the house um, and I don't remember whether we we were calling occasionally and we'd stop and listen we heard some crackling in the brush and so we kind of stopped and from there I thought we heard someone say, Dad, and so then we called out again, and they said, yes, we're right here, and we both just covered our, covered our faces and started running and popped out of the brush, and I slid under, and there were these purple rain boots, and I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> and they were just kind of like, hey. Were they very casual? <laughs> they were, I think I was more excited. Well, then I knew that was either the police officers or the fire department. And so did you feel safe? Yeah. yeah. And when you heard them, were you afraid at first, or did you like know you should call out? I felt, I thought it was Dad because their voices were similar to Dad's. So we called out and hopefully it was Dad. And how did you feel? Um, when they found us, I had I had felt like so bad. That means I couldn't walk, so they gave me a piggyback ride, and they less and they less eated food. They less had some water. Did they have some warm stuff to wrap you in? Yeah. And what did you do? Did you, how did you get them out of there? <coughs> Uh, we we kind of looked around to see if maybe we could get a helicopter in to get us out. Um, where we were, it was a long hike, and it wasn't a trail, it wasn't a road. So we uh, were in communication with the command post and let them know that we would, the girls were in good spirits and good health, and we would, we would all hike out. And so we hiked... Um, we hiked back to the quads and got, we had more warm clothes at the quads, so got them in the warm clothes and, and then we all took a, a little ride. At least they found a little tiny purple jacket that at least fitted me. Oh, that's so nice. And were you, how did you feel after having walked so far? My legs are sore, but I knew they could save us, so even though my legs are sore, I walked with them. And how about you, Caroline? Um, I, they had to carry me the whole way back to the quad. They took turns giving my sister piggyback rides. And they gave us, us they gave me cracker and corn and metal ball, but they, that, they were peanut butter. Yeah, I've been in contact with Mike, Mike all morning, letting him know that 
through the night, uh, search and rescue volunteers, along with my husband, had found new footprints in a different direction and that the search should go that direction. And then it wasn't even like two hours later that he called me and he told me that he didn't want to get our hopes up, but there was a possibility that my kids were found and alive, but they couldn't confirm it and that he would call me back and that we should get ready to go and see them and take them if, to the hospital if they needed to or just get ready for whatever. And then I don't even know how long, it seemed like forever, he called me back again. And he told me that he had my kids and that they were okay and they weren't even hurt and that they had my kids. And I couldn't even talk. I was kind of a wreck. And so a wonderful volunteer put us in her truck and drove us as fast as she could, could down our really, really dirty, muddy, six-mile dirt road. And a local neighbor, because I didn't even remember a car seat, uh, brought us her car seat from her child and we were reunited and we got to take the kids for quick observation up to the hospital and they were fine. They didn't require IV fluids. They just required heating blankets and some, some pizza. <laughs> well, same. She I was actually catching some sleep. I'd been up for about 48 hours at that point and I had to get some sleep. So she wrestled me awake and told me that the sheriffs wanted to talk to us and found out the same time as her. But I, I would like to address how we found these footprints that led to the rescue. And this is just amazing because um, there was two volunteers from the um, volunteer fire department and their organization had recalled the volunteers for the night to get some rest and to power up for the next day. And they refused to leave. They stayed and stuck it out along with my best friend for 20 years, Jesse. And it was uh, Luke and Justin. And together with me, we um, tried one last time and took a different way that not many people had searched before. And we started finding what we thought were footprints. And I mean, they were very convincing, just the perfect size for their boots. And we followed them uh, right down past where they were found, all the way down to the road out by Highway 101 by the big um, Footborough shop, which is the road they accessed um, when they came searching for them and found them the next morning. And because of their efforts and their refusal to give up, we found the trail that led to our little girls. And, you know, the volunteers and the local people, my friends and family, people I've never even met before in my life, um, local businesses, man, they put in so much effort and time and just made my heart glow with how, you know, good these people were because there, there are so many mean people in the world these days and it just really uplifted my spirits to know how many good people are still out there. And yeah, <laughs> I was just so happy to have my girls back <laughs> after two nights alone in, you know, 30 degree weather with rain. That really is a miracle. <laughs> and which one of you guys were the first ones to make it back? Were you in two different cars? You came up first? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Me. You were first? Actually, I was still through. No, no, you were, were first. first. Yeah. I was first. And what did you see? think when you saw your mom and your dad? I felt so happy. Oh. I felt so happy I started crying like the first time I felt I saw my brother. And, and what did you think? Um, I was so happy that I hugged Daddy and Mommy so tired. And what did you say when you saw them? I just asked them where they were. I said... Where did you go? What happened? Um, and hold my babies. I missed you. Bye so much. Must have been so much. Cried a lot. <laughs> Tried not to hurt him, squeezing him too tight. <laughs> I, I can't describe it. That's, I have two, two kids, and I couldn't imagine. No. Just happy we found them. It was pretty cold. Tell me how cold you felt. Well, we felt so cold, our hands turned white as snow. 
the first night it got down to 38 degrees and it rained all night long. My hands can only shut that way. <laughs> because our hands are so cold. Say that again. No. Our hands can only close that much because our hands are so cold. No. So they were like felt frozen. Yes. Like you couldn't move them. And my my lace hands were white, but mine were pink and white. Did they hurt? Yeah. 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 And what, what what did you cover yourself with? What did you have on? You had a little. Hoodie. My sister had a rain jacket, and she brought a sun hat. She used a sun hat of pillow. And we used the rain jacket as a blanket. And were you were you getting rained on the first night? I mean, yes. You were actually feeling rain. Oh, there was this big gap that I didn't see on the branch. I got our faces wet, and the rest of our bodies were dry. So we used the blanket as a head cover, and it covered our head for the night. <laughs> like a little umbrella. Yeah. Okay. And how, how hungry were you? Did you have we're anything? pretty hungry. Tell me this. I was pretty hungry. Were you thinking about cheeseburgers and Hawaiian pizza? <laughs> yes. But most of the night, I just dreamed about my family. And what about, what did you do to drink? Well, we drank water off the huckleberry leaves. What did you think of doing that? Well, our parents taught us that. Your mom and dad taught you to drink off the leaves? How much water were you able to get? Well, a little at a time. I got it a lot, but later we got a lot. Yeah, because my sister slurped all the water off the leaves. I, I couldn't find any water on the berry leaves. What about, were you worried about mountain lions? There's mountain lions around. Yeah. Did you ever see or hear anything like creepy in the woods at night? No. No? And we, and... Since I kept watch, I didn't see anything and heard anything. You sound like you were not very scared in the dark. No. Because I was next to my sister. You weren't scared at all? <laughs> and were you sure the whole time that, that Daddy was going to find her? Tell me about that. Well, I felt a little nervous and a little afraid. But I knew Dad would find us eventually. What about you, Caroline? Were you sure Daddy was gonna come? Yeah, kind of. Kind of. What was your scared, most scared part, your scariest part, Caroline? Being alone. Sleeping at night time, I thought bears would come and find us. You were afraid of bears. Thought the bears would come? Yeah. And so tell me about the second night. You went into that bush. How big was that bush? How low did you have to go to get it? Well, we crawled. That's how low we had to go. Was it a bunch of bushes? Like yes. Bears, yes. Yeah. What's it like in there? Is it warm or is it still cold? It was still cold. But the branches kind of insulated, so it was a little warm in there. And was it dry? Like, did the yes. rain not get through? Well, the rain got on my head, but not on my sister's. And I used, so I used it in my head to cover my face like a um, little umbrella, like who did my sister's jacket. How hungry were you, like, the second night, by the way? We're just pretty hungry. Our bellies grumbled the whole night. Dad, how were, what were your thoughts by, <laughs> what were you going through? Oh, every emotion you could think of, anywhere from it just being a dream to huddling up in a ball and bawling my eyes out. <laughs> That's how I felt too. If it wasn't for my friends and the volunteers keeping me from losing it, I'd, yeah. How but, far from home did it end up being? It well, was close, but it was far from as the as the crow flies, it was about a mile and a half away. As far as they walked, it was closer to six miles away. The country we live in is just ravines and steep hills. I mean, you can see something that's a quarter mile away, it's going to take you four hours to get there, you know. It's, it's very rugged territory, and it's amazing how much distance they covered. <laughs> so were they 
trying to get back, do you think? I mean, yes. Yeah. Apparently, like, going into, so after you made the wrong turn and then you came back, how did you feel? Did you feel lost? Did you feel like, yes. I'm sure home's close? Tell me about that. Well, I wasn't sure which way home was, but it turned out home was way back south. What's that, Mom? It's exactly where home was. Home was back south. <laughs> and so, but you can go ahead, Caroline. Um, we passed it home a couple of times, and we didn't notice because there was a hell valleys in front of it. Was it hard to walk in the rainbows? Were you guys stuck in the A little. Stuff? We didn't got stuck. I tripped over rocks and branches a couple of times, but I'm like, it was all right. But we were pretty tired. Yeah. Yeah. How did you feel when you first saw your mom? You felt so happy. Did you guys tell each other stories? Yeah. Or did you argue? I do argue with my brother. I, I told my sister if she got to sleep, I'll tell her a story. But she just kept on bawling. What did you say to her when she bawled, when she cried? What did you tell her to make her feel better? Think about how they thought with mom and dad. Caroline, how did you feel when you saw your dad? So happy. What did daddy say to you? He said, I don't actually remember. He said, I'm so glad that you're back. That's all I remember. That's great. What, did you have to cut through branches with a chainsaw to get to them? Is that true? We, uh, we cut a couple of trees that went across the road to get the quads where we, where we ended up. Most of it, most of the trees that came across the road, we just, we just went over. Uh, we were able to get over them on the quads and we were trying to spend as little time. We wanted to get where we were going and not take a bunch of time cutting. If we could get around it or get over it, we did that. Um, but were you already in voice contact with them? No, no, we were not. We were um, just following a path. We hiked, we hiked for about two hours off the quads, um, not on trails, just up the mountain. And, um, and we weren't in voice contact. As soon as we heard them, we were right, up, we were right above them. Um, so it didn't take us... With, within the first time that we heard them, we were there in five minutes, tops. You didn't have to cut them out, though. No, no, no. We just, I mean, it was really thick huckleberry, and we just pushed through. Um, and they were in sort of an opening spot by the huckleberries, and so we just fought our way through, and, and then there they were. I noticed you said you put your hands up because those things are prickly as heck. It, it just protect your face, and when you, uh, adrenaline kind of kicked in, and we were excited to to have a, a good resolution, um, and so we weren't really worried about ourselves. Can you cover your face and plunge through and get there as quickly as we could. And how did you get them out of that prickly mess? Um, we stayed there while we contacted the command post to make sure that uh, everyone knew that they were found. Uh, let them eat and drink. Um, sent out GPS coordinates so that everyone would know where we were. We weren't able to make radio contact, but uh, cell phone coverage was great right there. Um, and so after a little bit of discussion with the command post, we established that the best thing for us to do was just to uh, hike back to the quads. Um, because there were no trails, it would have taken a really long time for anyone to get where we were. And we felt confident that we could hike out um, they, they could hike out. And so we just worked our way back up out of the huckleberries and up to the top of the ridge and then kind of made our own trail back down to the road where the quads were parked. And, and, and I, my understanding is that you're with um, Piercy's 
No, no. What's your day job? I work for a custom redwood mill uh, in Piercy. Absolutely. Like you, so you, you have to train. How many, how many hours a year do you have to train? I don't think we have an SOP for exactly. We train every Saturday, um, and we train with Leggett Fire, um, and we do a lot of cooperation with other departments so that we can train with the people that we're going to be working with. Mom, can you take me through your emotional roller coaster? How hopeful and... I wasn't hopeful after the first night and it being 38 degrees and raining, pouring, pouring rain. I was in a really dark place. And luckily my sister and my really close friends came and, and uh, the search and rescue volunteers and... Uh, group of close friends of my husband's and I just tried to keep me as positive as possible because I had very dark images in my head. I constantly heard my kids screaming for help in my head and knowing that I couldn't help them and there was nothing I could do was very difficult. The first day and night that they were missing I was told to stay at the house not to go out searching and in case they came home or and they needed to coordinate anything with the the huge posse of people that were helping and that was the most difficult thing of my life and so when the search and rescue pulled out to rest for that first night at about two o'clock in the morning I suited up and I went out and they wouldn't let me go alone thank God and they would never let Travis go out alone either and Wherever we wanted to go, people took me, and we climbed ravines, and we went over landslides, and, and I just kept saying, that I just wanted my babies back. I wanted my babies back, that my babies were coming back, and that we were going to be okay, and that this doesn't happen. It felt like a nightmare, like I couldn't wake up. So you stayed positive, huh? You convinced yourself, and did you encourage each other, you and your husband? We did. And I, I knew if I broke down and I gave way to my emotions that I would be useless, that I wouldn't help coordinate, I wouldn't be allowed to search, for sure. And so I wouldn't let myself break down the way I wanted to until somebody gave me the bad news to break down for. And so the second day... I searched all day long. I hiked miles and miles and miles in terrain of my own property that I've never been able to reach because there was a time the huckleberry brush was so thick, I had to pull my rain jacket and my hood over my face, get down on my stomach, and crawl like a snake to get out. And as long as I was moving and I was doing something, I felt like we were moving in the right direction and it was going to be a positive outcome. And after the second night, they finally made me sleep and I got about two hours sleep and I woke up and I had the worst panic attack I've ever had in my life and I lost it. How did it feel? Awful. I don't like feeling that way. I work really, really hard not to feel that way. Um, and I let myself go. I let myself feel that and I, about half an hour, I screamed and I threw things and I, I let myself think all the bad things that I could and then I pulled myself in and hysterical people are not helpful and and I suited back up and I went back out and we searched all the next day and I didn't think I was going to get my kids back by that time I thought exposure or animals or something and at that time we were working off a set of footprints that were about Caroline's size at the bottom of the ravine below my house um, on the creek bed. And those were the only size boots that they could find. So I was certain that they were separated and that Leah had been hurt because Leah doesn't leave her sister for anything. They're always together. And Le 
Leia's the leader. Like, anything Leia does, Caroline follows. And so I was certain something was wrong with Leia. She'd either been hurt or incapacitated, stuck or something. And so I got very dark. And we searched all night long. And finally, Travis and a group of volunteers found the footprints and I got some hope and I held on to that with all I could and I called everybody that I thought could help and that and there are so many outpouring of people on Facebook people I don't know but my local community I mean people I grew up here my husband's third generation here and I have friends but I have a lot of acquaintances like people you just see in the grocery store or, and they came out and gave food and you know brought you know, we have livestock and I didn't remember we had animals and they not only fed my animals they brought and bought the food for my animals they were off grid they brought gas for my generator and I didn't have to touch a stick of firewood for two and a half days they brought in all the firewood and, and you mentioned in the GoFundMe about the road <sighs> Um, we live up a six mile dirt road. The whole entire thing is dirt road. We are the last people on the road. There are 22 or 21 other parcels. And um, it is already a four wheel drive road. And we try to maintain it. We try to keep the traffic on the road to a minimum to keep the wear on the road to a minimum. And we open everybody, not just our road, all the, the close neighbors there and open their roads and their gates and you know we're fully cooperative so there were hundreds of vehicles on our road and it was already raining and we would had so much storms so I didn't think we would make it home from the hospital last night and we <laughs> my sister and her four-wheel drive got us there um, I might have to buy her some new shocks <laughs> um, and we got off the mountain today um, and I think we'll make it home, but I'm not sure. And so it's just, it's it's the muddiest I've ever seen it. It's, it, I mean, it's, it's kind of destroyed, but worth it. So the outpouring of support of people locally was amazing, right? Everybody came out. And they did things I never even thought of. And, and even people from all over the country, like would Facebook me or... Instagram me or whatever get a hold of me any way they could to tell me that they were praying for us and they were thinking of us and that means so much to me and it's the news articles got a lot of really awful comments and it made me feel, feel it made me feel really bad it made me feel like a bad mother and a bad person and the comments that were coming from strangers into my personal Facebook Messenger were amazing. They were full of support and well wishes and offerings of help and anything. And so I stopped reading news articles and I started reading the comments that were coming directly to me. And that's how I... As Travis mentioned how, you know, so many people are mean and then so many people are good. Yeah. And I really, really appreciate... I've read every single message that everybody has sent to me. And if I haven't responded right now, I will, I promise, because you guys have kept me going. How do you feel about the negative people? They I can't worried? comment on that because it's not appropriate. <laughs> Any final thoughts on this ordeal? My girls spend a lot of time at um, 4-H, and we do an outdoor adventure program. Leia's been in it for two years. Uh, Caroline's officially been in it for a year, but she tagged along for the first year of Leia, too. And uh, the group leader, Justin, has taught them fire-making skills and, you know, wilderness survival skills and kind of, like, how to tell directions and... and Would they be alive if they had I don't know. I don't think so. We tried to teach them that things too, but I saw like in the fire making skills that Justin taught them and them trying to make that fire, they learned that there. 
and you know they learned to look for a huckleberry bush. I mean, they knew to because we had taught them to stay put, but he taught them how to stay dry. And with the Miranda 4-H teaching them these things, I am forever appreciative. And with all the volunteer fire departments and the technical search and rescue and all these groups are privately funded. They get no funding and their donation and volunteer only. And I urge people to volunteer to these organizations in your area and to donate to these places in your area to keep these people going because God forbid anything happens, they're there for you. Um, they went missing at 2.39, and at 4 p.m. I had bought a package of GPS carabiners off of Amazon Prime <laughs> that I might attach to a spleen <laughs> or something. A necklace. Uh, microchipping <laughs> isn't looking so bad right now. Are they grounded? No, I'm trying not to punish them really hard. <laughs> trying not because... They did the right thing. I mean, they, they might have wandered off, but they stuck together and they, they pulled themselves through. They saved each other. So I'm the proudest mom. I raise superheroes. Thank you. Are you guys going to do anything differently when you go outside Carolina? Yes. Yeah. Well, we're not going to leave the house. Until we get those GP, we're not going to go on a hike until we get those GPS trackers. <laughs> or a life, a life kit. Life, sorry, look at. But are you scared to go back outside or do you think you'll, you'll go back and enjoy it? I'll, I'm going to go back and enjoy it, but I'm not going on a hike. Thanks. Or we're never going to pass on Mall Clever again. Say that again. We're never going to pass that marker if we go on a hike again. Good, good thinking. Bring the dog next time, huh? Oh, we it. tried. Is lazy the dog? Or lazy? <laughs> They're lazy. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are great. You're heroes. <laughs>